Hello, Lothar here, PCT3 Hiko 2021. Uh, this is my last video on uh, specific gear items that uh, are used on my PCT3 Hike. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, this is not meant to be a detailed comparison of lots of different options. This is just basically the gear I settled on for my through hike, and I'm hopefully going to talk through some of the thought processes I went through, uh, which might be helpful to you if you're going through the same um, uh, thoughts and processes and sorting out your kit for your next through hike. So the first one is um, uh, trekking poles. I'm just going to pull up the ones here. Now I've used various trekking poles through the years, aluminium. Uh, these are carbon fibre. These are black diamond. These are distance carbon FLZs uh, of a uh, certain range. You can change the height. Um, I used a variant, a version of these uh, on the right. This is uh, my replacement set. Um, they have uh, tungsten carbide tips on the ends. They're replaceable and little mini snow bar, mini, mini baskets here. And then you can add on uh, snow baskets like this or similar ones like this um, to give you um, some traction as you're going through snow. Now they worked fine. I uh, started my hike with one trekking pole. I tend to, um, to be very, uh, find it very uncomfortable initially with two uh, trekking poles. I just wanted a bit of extra sturdiness as I was hiking. Um, and one thing I never did was put the straps on the wrist straps. Now, the reason is, is the fact that these, uh, let me just get the straps up here. The idea is you put your hand in through and you, you, you put the weight on through the wrist strap. Now, I think that's great if you're in through um, road walking or predictable hiking. Now, uh, what can happen on the on a through hike, in particular when you're in remote areas, you get your pole stuck. Now, if you're moving fast and on certain occasions you're doing this, if I got my pole stuck, I could very easily hurt my wrist. So I, me personally, I don't use the straps. I know I'm not using them efficiently. I'm just using trekking poles as a bit of sturdiness and a bit of help getting up, up, up and down uh, certain sections of the trail but it's not to be super efficient with trekking poles. Now, um, if you are gonna do that, be, be careful about if you get um, uh, your pole stuck, have a, have a, a, a you know, practice process whereby you just move your hand or something in such a way that you're not gonna strain your wrist. Uh, right, other thing. Uh, now, when I got to the Sierras, um, uh, and also actually at Mount San Jacinto, which is the first real mountain um, that you'll encounter on the PCT, uh, you have to have snow equipment. Um, now. This is a trekking pole which has an ice axe head on it. So this is uh, basically a black diamond whippet. Now uh, you could have a traditional snow uh, ice axe. Now that's a dedicated ice axe with an ice axe head on a, on a, uh, a pole or a section of a fixed length. Now um, I, when I was younger I did a lot of snow and ice climbing um, uh, through the years and I used different ice axes and so different lengths, different head types and Particularly when you're trekking, there's always a problem when you're you're, you're hiking. One, what length of uh, ice axe you go with, and two, you you're, if you're going through that transition of um, the snow line, so you're going from normal ter terrain with no no snow cover into snow, you're going a bit of snow, no snow, bit of snow, no snow. So half the time you're actually you're taking your 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 ice axe off your backpack, on off, on off, on off, and sometimes you kind of think, oh, you know, it's a bit facile. I'll, I'll go over this piece of snow without it. Um, now that's that's a personal choice, and it's the same thing. Uh, with if you use crampons or, or micro spikes on your feet, um, it's that that decision of when you use them when you don't. Now, the, I come from the philosophy where I kind of liked having an ice axe in my hand all the time when I was anywhere near snow. So this this option of this black diamond whip it is a full. Um, it's actually a, an aluminium uh, trekking pole, not a titanium. So it's slightly imbalanced in terms of weight if you're going to use your normal trekking poles, um, and. But the idea is it's always in your hand. Um, so and you also can you can change the height. So that's the good wash your hands. So you get to a different snow and if, if the angle of the snow is different, you can change your height or, or your height of your your affected your ice axe. Now this is not as strong as an ice axe. Now I know there's a videos that do a much better comparison. Um, I personally settled on this because it had enough strength for trekking uh, situations. But if I was doing mountain, I probably I would have a normal full axe ice axe. Um, but for the PCT a trail. Uh, and the sections I went through, this was sufficient. Now, this is the new version. This isn't this isn't actually the one I hiked, but I hiked with an earlier version where the ice sack head was fixed. This new version is brilliant because you can actually take the head off. I'm just, this is my present to myself after post-trail. I can actually take that head off and I've just got a normal trekking pole. So if I'm worried about accidentally stabbing myself, and, and it's quite a real possibility if you, you, if you drop your trekking pole or something like that, you can actually have this in your backpack or in your, in your, on your side pockets. As soon as you get to snow, you just pop it on, put it down like that, screw it in, 
uh, set the ice axe length to the height you want. Uh, I would probably have a snow basket on this as well, so it doesn't uh, uh, disappear into the snow. And then you've got effectively a, a variable ice axe. I, I say again, it's not a replacement for an ice axe. It's an option for people who are maybe experienced with snow and ice uh, uh, to maybe not carry an ice axe, but carry one of these. Um, but uh, anyway, personal choice. I love this piece of kit and I would go hiking again, but always be careful about the fact that you are carrying an ice axe head. I love the fact that Black Diamond have issued the new version with a removable head. Okay, anyway, that's the Black Diamond Whippet. Now, the other pieces of kit I have obviously are your traction devices for your feet in snow. Uh, now, these are Cthulhu micro spikes. Now, the idea is you just pull them over, they're rubberized, and the tension in the rubber keeps them on your shoes. Now, I use trail runners like Ultra Lone Peaks, they worked fine. Uh, again, the same sort of problem with this is if you're transitioning from rock to snow, rock to snow, you're constantly popping these in out. Now, these are actually relatively easy to pop on and off, and you can actually have them hanging on the side of your rucksack and pop them on and off. So, uh, they're less of a frustration maybe with an ice axe that you, have, you take on and off whenever you might want it or not want it. These, I, I love the fact that these are simplistic and they did actually stay on uh, my shoes. So, uh, love the Cthulhu Micro Specs. Um, uh, other things on snow and ice. Oh, yeah, obvious ones. Uh, sunglasses, you obviously, because you're getting a lot of reflected light off the snow, um, you're, you're squinting a lot. You want to have sunglasses in the snow. Um, and if you didn't know already, you probably want polarized sunglasses is big, the simple fact is is that light as it's reflected off the snow uh, a large element of it uh, is turned into what's called horizontal polarized light um, and um, polarized sunglasses are designed in such a way that the the way the uh, lenses and the way they're constructed and the layers uh, in the layer uh, in, in the lenses are constructed it actually reduces the amount of horizontal polarization like that so if I rotate it at 90 degrees if you if you put, put these in front of your say your LCD um, uh, display on your, your laptop or you, you if you turn rotate these you'll see um, uh, it go dark or light or dark or light because the light coming off off a TV screen or, or a laptop screen is polarized as well uh, so it just demonstrates the principle of, of polarization of light on any reflected light coming off the surface like water or snow is uh, polarized uh, in so, so preferentially polarized in the horizontal direction and polarized sunglasses are designed to reduce that so these are great for snow and ice in particular uh, this is my second pair and uh, been very happy with this you can get loads of brands of smiths these are ray-bans there's lots of others but polarized sunglasses they don't actually have to be too expensive now you can get them relatively cheaply um, and um, definitely needed for snow and ice uh, Right, the last few things I'm going to think about is just more some of the medical ones. I'm, I'm coming to the end of the gear videos. I'm, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. Uh, this is um, some of the things I, I, I found interesting that I thought I'd like to pass on. Um, uh, now, uh, when you're hiking, your, your feet get battered an awful lot. Now, you obviously, there's going to be blisters and things like that. Now, if you've been doing preparation, um, hopefully you won't get too many blisters. But the one thing I suffered from um, was toenails, and it's almost like or not not fully ingrown toenails but it's on the verge of because i'm pressing my feet and my feet probably pushing my toes are probably going into the front of my shoe uh, probably a lot more often than they normally would the i was getting well, the effect of the feeling of an ingrown toenail but not the full-blown uh, medical condition now one thing i found in america is um basically uh, there's, there's a couple of um ingrown toenail relieving things you can buy in a pharmacy now this particular one is a dr shoals ingrown toenail pain reliever and I found this, I carried this on trail and it's really useful because it, it doesn't stop the ingrown toenail but what is if you start feeling it you put these little, you know, these little discs here I'll just show you they're just adhesive discs um, they've got a slot I don't know if you can see that there now what you do is you put that around so that is actually the the interface between the nail and the skin of your your toenail your toe and you squirt this stuff in and what it is, it softens the skin and the nail such that you can actually get a pair of scissors in and just trim the, the edge of the nail that's been growing. And I used that multiple times through the trail and it stopped the, the nail getting worse. Um, I've come off trail and I don't have the problem anymore. So it's obviously the fact that because I'm moving my feet all the time, compressing it all the time, it was aggravated more um, and uh, I needed to do this process. Um, but simple kits like this, yeah, I would carry these again on a long distance hike. Uh, Ingrowing toenail pain reliever um, by Dr. Scholz. Now, uh, there's other variants of this and other brands, I'm sure. I love that. Um, uh, one last thing I carried. Um, now, if, if you remember on previous videos, I talked about um, the importance of knowing that you're walking straight and uh, use of insoles on your shoes, and I use orthotics. Um, but I still carried um, a knee brace just in case. Now, 
Um, I was trying to find one where, because I had pains initially when I was training before I used orthotic, um, where I had pain down the side and the bottom of my knee, and um, I, can't, I was trying to find a, a pad that kind of allowed me to correct, well, you know, not correct, but put comfort around those different areas. Now, the one I was recommending was this. This is a Cho Pat one, and what the good about this is, you've got Velcro Velcro sections that go above and below the knee. So what you can do is, if the problem's on the below the knee, you can put the lower one tighter. Let me just show you, it's very strong Velcro. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, if it's on the top of the knee, you can um, tighten that strap at the top, or if the, problem, and, uh, if the problem's are reverse and it's on the bottom of the knee, you can make that one tighter to give you support underneath the knee and release this one. Um, I luckily didn't need this in the end, um, but I saw a few people using this and it's, it's, it's other knee braces. Um, but uh, I kept that, carried that as a, spe as a sort of a insurance, if you like, certainly when I was going down hills. Um, uh, thankfully, I never needed it. But uh, something to consider in terms of if you, if, you, if you find you might be able to buy a lower one or you might buy a top one. But I like the idea that this is actually allows you to do both, uh, and you can cinch it in different ways. Uh, uh, but uh, coming back to my previous videos. Uh, if you've got time, take a look at the one where I talk about orthotics on, uh, I think it's my second video, um, where I'd never considered using orthotics before. I was having knee pains as I was preparing for the PCT, as I was increasing my training. And when I switched to orthotics, um, I was lucky enough to solve, solve my particular problem. So anything to do with gait, anything to do with knees, you've obviously got to be careful. Um, and uh, if, you, if you're constantly trying to find uh, pads or, or solutions or orthotics that work for you, this is one to consider. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it for the moment. I will move on to videos on some of the experiences I had on the on the PCT and um, some of maybe the, the comical situations I've had myself in. But uh, anyway, hope these videos have been helpful to you on your gear. If you have any other questions on other specific gear that I may have left out, I, again, I'm just kind of focused on the high level gear. I'm not coming on all the after ultra niche if you're, you know, you know how many needles do I have in my sewing kit or you know, you know how many tablets I carry on an ibuprofen I'm not going to go into that level of detail but uh, yeah if there's a specific questions you have I'll try and answer them okay thank you very much for watching speak to you soon